Welcome back. You know, we we're just talking. Uh, Clint Gessel joins us. He's the official photographer for the Space Needle, which is actually a privately owned building. And uh, I would like to live there. <laughs> um, Clint Gessel is is back, as I said. And, you know, you talk, we've been talking about buying houses. And, and before that, we were talking a little bit about just presenting the house in the best light. And, Clayne, well, first of all, welcome. How are you? Thank you, Ben. Good. How are you? Good. You know, and, and Clayne, you've been, you know, you're fantastic. You come on. Good to have you. We, we trust you with our, our of our photos and, and our official photographer. Not that we're the space needle, but hey, we're not. Just as good. <laughs> Just not as quite reputable. as tall or thin <laughs> working on it. Um, but talk a little bit about the importance of professional photography when buying or selling a home because these photos are kind of like they go everywhere, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Over and over again, we see studies where houses that have professional photography sell for more. They list, you know, they have higher hits on, on websites. Um, and it's the face of the home. It's, it's what the home looks like. It's exactly what everybody wants to see and putting it out there on the internet under the best light is the best way to, to get a higher, higher price for it. Because and you, cause you really do start bringing more people in. Absolutely. You bring more people in and more people, uh, it generates a lot more interest. Talk a little bit about all the different photos that you take to appropriately photograph a house. When you take it, thank you. When you, when you take a, a, a house, you want to make sure you get all the rooms. You want to make sure that you get outside, inside. You want to make sure that you get everything in the best possible light. And I actually like it when it's staged. I like the house to be full of you want fresh flowers, you want furniture, because when people are looking at houses, they want to envision their own lives in that house. And the best way to do that is when it's when it's full with somebody else's things. Especially the fresh flowers, because, I, you know, all the, the wives that go in there go, oh, if we buy this house, my husband's going to bring me fresh flowers every day. Well, that's what they think. <laughs> that's a perception. Yeah, and absolutely. I'll be stopping on the store on my way home now. <laughs> but, um, you know, so that staging, you know, the, the perception of somebody living there, making it really a desirable place. Right, exactly. It makes a huge difference when you're looking at everybody's seen pictures of empty buildings or empty apartments, empty houses. Uh, and houses that have furniture that are full, that are busy, that are bustling, those are much more attractive to people. And and when you do that, what are some of those key things that you focus on? I mean, how do you make the photos maybe more enticing? To make them, there's a lot of uh, tricks that you can use as a professional photographer. There's a technique called HDR, which uh, makes a photo look very well exposed. It, it captures the outside light, balances it with the inside light. It's actually a, a three, five, or seven exposure blend where you take a bunch of different photos and you put them together so that you get a perfect exposure with nothing that's blown out, nothing that's too dark. Um, and it it makes the, the house and every, every minute look much better when you can see the outside and inside. Well, I mean, you just talked about brides wanting to take 50 pounds off. I mean, so this is kind of that same thing. You make a house look better. Exactly. You make the house look, yeah. in the best possible light shoot when the light is right. Shoot when it looks at its very best, just like a bride, you dress it up really nice. (laughs) I think it's a her, not an it. Her. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you when you start putting all these photos together, it's somewhat of a collage, right? I mean, you're trying to make sure that it, it is in its best light, and you have all these different pieces. You also talked about, you know, as you're creating this collage of a home, getting rid of some things, and and it's I think we've talked about that today, you know, on our show. I know we have on the staging aspect, but the staging for photography, I think, is key. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's amazing how much just a few hours of work will do. You mow your lawn, you clean up toys. If you have a dog, you put the kennel away and you clean up the, the dog messes. But just little, the Hopefully they were clean in the house before, but yeah. <laughs> just the little tiny things that you can do that, that most people don't do. Do touch up paint, uh, trim around the hedges of your, of your yard when you're taking outside photos fix cracks, you know, and, and just the little tiny things that can take a little bit to repair can make a huge difference. You know, in, in my monologue, we, I talked a little bit about how many, how much positive news there is out there, negative news and, and the balance of all this. It would seem that when you're trying to photograph a house, people will, te- will, fo- will focus on that negative thing. You can have this big, beautiful home, but the second there's a a blemish, that's probably what they remember. It's that negative headline within a house. Absolutely. That's what sticks with, with you and your mind. is, And so fixing those is so important in order to get your house uh, listed better. 
So if somebody wants to list their house appropriately or and take the right pictures, uh, you know, Steve was actually here a few minutes ago. He's going to come back, talk about these three P's. Presentation, big piece of that, product, putting, you know, making the, the photography. Hey, Steve, there's another P for it, photography. Um, but the, you know, what should somebody look for when hiring a professional photographer? I mean, because that's, that's what you do. You have obviously are at the top of your business in the city. Not everybody gets to photograph the Space Needle and be their official photographer. Um, so, you know, you it's a big difference, photographing the Space Needle right. to a house. What should somebody do or what should a, whether it's a real estate agent who's trying to refer somebody or a consumer, what, are, what should they look for? I mean, how do you pick a photographer that it's going to do the best job. Right, absolutely. There are a lot of photographers out there, a lot of great photographers too. The best way to pick one for your house is to ask for recommendations and look at their portfolio. You want a, somebody that's photographed hundreds of houses and, and you can go through and look at their houses, look at their work. The best predictor of future behavior is past experience. It's it's all about what they've shot in the past. It's all about what their, their portfolio is built out of. If they've done a good job in the past, you know they're going to be reliable. You know they're going to be consistent. And your what's your, what what is your your Klingessel dot com right? It is Klingessel dot com, and that's where people can actually see your portfolio. Absolutely. Um, and then so if somebody goes through, they like some of the photos. What are some of the big red flags then? Big red flags for for a bad photographer. For a bad photographer would be somebody that that hasn't shot a lot. Somebody that, that comes in with the their right digital with their with right. their smartphone and starts snapping photos. Right, exactly. Although the iPhone takes great photos these days, <laughs> <laughs> real good with the lighting and everything. Right, right? but bad equipment, absolutely. Uh, not only not only on the on the hardware side of camera and gear. But on the software side, there's a lot of software that that costs just as much as camera gear and does just as much for your final images, like Adobe Photoshop and and everything else. The whole package that goes every that puts everything together. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, we you know you see that in still photography and video and in just about everything. There is good software and bad software. So right, I guess asking them uh, what they use and then looking up how much it would cost you. <laughs> right, <laughs> if you want right, to buy right. yourself. Uh, Clean, thanks so much for joining us. When we come back, uh, Ryan and Steve are going to join us with Clean to discuss a little bit more about all of these things. My name is Ben Brashen. You're listening to Brashenomics. <laughs> 